70s did and everybody was 100% Boston Tea Party, except they didn't damage any property. The feds did that. Had no court order to destroy the water tanks and shoot the cattle, prize bulls, we've now learned. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prejudice indeed, and prudence indeed, will indicate and will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that Mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object invents a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now necessarily with constraints them to alter their former system of government. See, it necessarily constrains them. That's a key word. They are bound to throw off the absolute tyranny. The history of the king of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. And what do we do every day? I've written a new Declaration of Independence that got widely circulated and hailed by constitutional lawyers and picked up by major news sites showing the, the long train of abuses. You should write your Declaration of Independence. It was just another bill of particulars they had for a decade before listing the crimes of the illegitimate paramilitary force perched on top the 13 colonies. Using the power of tax to destroy their competition. Did you know the landed lords were exempt from most of the taxes and so no one could do competition with them? And George Washington had to go and basically be screwed over by them over and over again? That's why they were ready to fight, because they were exempt, like Warren Buffett, from the taxes they were putting on our forebears. It's the same New World Order, same crew we're fighting today. Nomi Prinz, ladies and gentlemen, is our guest, and I'm going to settle down now a little bit. It's just being called a traitor, being called a despot, being called dangerous, because I'm not even calling for violence, but because I hail what the Bundys did. How could you not admire them? How could you not, when all we do is lay down, when all we do is put up with anything? We're a joke around the world now. Land of the free, home of the brave. And you've got the conservative media calling Bundy a moocher while his family is under attack and that pig son, Rory Reed, is set to make money and works for the Chinese company. All right, her website is nomiprins.com. NomiPrince.com, all the president's bankers. She's got a new novel out. She's written nonfiction books as well. Nomi, we're going to break in a moment, and I apologize for getting you on late, but uh, we're going to go over the current, what's happening in the economy, and, and your take on it and everything. What else do you think we should know? What else is coming up? Um, well, there's a lot. My, my new book is out last week, um, All the President's Bankers, The Hidden Alliances That Drive American Power, and that power manifests in domestically, internationally, um, from the standpoint of what happens with the Fed through the standpoint of what happens through the international entities like the World Bank and IMF. Um, and it's, uh, it was probably the hardest book I've, I've written. There's 70 pages of footnotes in it. Um, and some of them I got right to near Austin when I was at the LBJ library through the other libraries as well. And there's, there's a lot of really good history, um, starting from Teddy Roosevelt through Obama and the relationships of the presidents to all of the specific bankers of their time, the personal relationships, the social connections, and why those manifested in policies for us. All right, we'll break it all down on the other side with Nomi Prince, nomiprince.com. Her new book, All the President's Bankers. Thank you so much, Nomi. And again, the reason I get upset talking about the Bundy situation is I know all the facts are more than most people, the basic facts. And regardless, the demonization of those that are tired of being run over by a government run by foreign banks that are exempt from taxes, I'm just done.
And the fact that the media is going with the fact that Bundy's a mooch is absolute fraud. See, producers now didn't build it and were all moochers. Our managing director at Goldman Sachs blew the whistle on a lot of stuff, done a great job. Tell us what you think about the stock market derivatives, the state of the world economy right now. Well, the state of where we are right now is this conglomeration and concentration of more power and wealth in the hands of a smaller group of individuals, institutions than ever in the history of, of our country. And for example, right now, the big six banks in the United States control, and this is a big number, 84% of our insured deposits, 96% of the derivatives in the United States and 45% of the derivatives in, a, in the world. So what does that mean? They have the largest pool ever and the most concentrated pool, the most monopolistic pool ever of our deposits, leveraged into speculative trading that enables them to have the largest proportion ever of dangerous derivatives in our history. And right now, having gone through the 2008 crisis, we're at a point where our bigger banks are bigger than before. They have been allowed to be so and subsidized by that for uh, with plans from the Treasury Department as well as the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve book today is $4.2 trillion of debt. That means breaking down $1.6 trillion of mortgage securities. Those are the toxic securities that imploded the financial system and the global economy. And 1.6 trillion of them are on the books of the Fed. And almost $3 trillion worth of other types of debt securities, treasury securities are also on the books of the Fed. That means we are funding the additional speculation of these more concentrated, more powerful banks in a manner that has never been seen before in our history, that is more dangerous than ever before. Um, and in addition, we have had the longest period of zero interest rate policy with the Fed giving money effectively freely, in addition to all of this other help in all of our deposits, to these institutions, and that is a policy that is longer and has been gone, going on for more years than, than ever before, and that includes during wars, after wars, in any form in the Fed's history as well. So that's, that's where we're at today. That's, that's a really dangerous position. Um, and it's not just that concentration of speculation and, and wealth and capital, it's the concentration of political and financial power that's behind having all of that concentrated wealth and leveraged capital power. And that's really where we're standing today. It's a very, very precarious place. And now they want to use Ukraine crisis. They help create, regardless of which side people are on, to create a Marshall Plan for all of Europe, claiming that the crisis they have engineered on record is going to bring down all of Europe if they don't get hundreds of billions of dollars to keep propping up their scam. Do you agree with that analysis? I, I, I'm so glad you brought up the point of, of, of the scam aspect of that and the Marshall Plan because there is such a, a connection. And I, I, I went through a lot of Truman's records and his relationships with John McCloy and various bankers at the time that the World Bank was being established and that we we're in a period of the post war into the Cold War. And at that time, the idea was that there had to be an expansion of the U.S. as a political superpower and also of the banks as a financial component of that superpower. And they mutually reinforced each other. So this idea of uh, fighting the Cold War was also about expanding this, this financial influence globally. And the World Bank, in fact, John McCloy, who later became the chairman of Chase, had asked Truman when he was offered to the presidency of the World Bank, he said, I will only take that position if you let me trade those bonds through Wall Street, where, where his friends were and where he ultimately wound up and where he came from. And that gave the financial interests at the time, the start of their ability to dictate where funds went. And they went, and I'm getting to the Ukraine because there's a really interesting through line here. In the 50s, they went into Cuba, which of course, Fidel Castro ultimately um, nationalized the banks in 1959. But in the mid 50s, they went to Cuba because that was the, the alignment of, of, of military and financial presence. Um, in Beirut as well, because that was where bankers wanted to go to have access to the Middle East initially in the 50s. And there was a, a rising there in 1958, to which Eisenhower sent troops. Um, and that was just the beginning of this, this connection. You fast forward that through line to the Ukraine today, and there's the same form of what was established back then of you know, propping up this idea of this uh, sort of ideological war, because that plays well in terms of rhetoric on both sides. And then they call stopping the war and rebuilding Ukraine 
a, a new Marshall Plan when all it is is another wealth transfer right to George Soros, who's yeah. calling for it. Stay there, Nomi Prince. I want to come back, get your take on all the corruption that's coming out with the banks, the stock market. As a real, you know, futurist when it comes to money, uh, as a top analyst, we want your perspectives on what's coming up dead ahead with Nomi Prince. NomiPrince.com. I'm Alex Jones. We're on the march.